A team at DeepMind recently released this preprint on AlphaCode. The paper's a bit of a beast at 31 pages, so I'm making a short video cutting straight to the essential details of how this system actually works. Now, they're targeting a very specific type of coding problem. There are several websites that host coding challenges where there's a short description of a problem as well as some example test cases where you're given inputs paired with the correct expected outputs. The whole objective is to write some code that gives the expected output both for the example test cases and also for a held out hidden set of test cases. If your code passes all the tests, then you've solved the problem. The headline result is that AlphaCode achieves a success rate equal to that of the average user on the coding challenges hosted on the website Code Forces. So how does it actually work? This is the summary diagram given in the paper. At a high level, what we have is a nicely engineered system where the major building blocks are transformer language models. But essentially, no individual component is that new. So let's focus first on how the system works at test time. It's important to know up front that there's a very specific protocol they allow themselves when solving these coding problems. And this protocol really determines the pipeline of the system. They say that they are allowed to use the example test cases as much as they'd like, since these are given as part of the problem, but they do restrict themselves to a maximum of 10 submissions over the held out hidden test set cases. There are really three separate stages going on at test time, which we'll break down. In stage one, they use a large transformer model that takes as input the problem description, example tests, and some metadata about the problem, all in a single string. They then sample from this model to generate a huge number of potential solutions. Now, the reason they start with so many is that most of these scripts will fail. Uh, some won't even compile. So stage two and stage three are ways to reduce this large pool of 1 million potential scripts to select 10 that they think might work. Given the protocol they use, the quick obvious thing to do is simply to test all of the 1 million scripts on the example test cases. Around 99% of the generated scripts will fail these example tests, and so they can directly exclude them. This reduces the number of scripts to the order of thousands. Uh, the exact number varies a lot depending on how hard the problem is. Now, the protocol still requires further reducing this to only 10 solutions, and they have a pretty smart way of doing this next part. They use a second transformer model that takes as input the problem description, but instead of trying to generate code to solve the problem, this transformer is going to generate test case inputs and they sample 50 of these for each problem. Now, they are not trying to generate input and output pairs. They're just trying to produce some realistic inputs that are relevant to the problem. So it might have to generate strings or binary numbers or lists of numbers, etc., depending on what the problem is on. Why is this a good idea? Well, they take the view that if two scripts return the same answer for all 50 generated tests, then they probably use the same algorithm, and you probably don't want to waste two of your submissions trying both of these scripts. So they compile and run the 1,000 or so scripts on these 50 generated inputs. They then cluster the scripts based on the outputs of these 50 fictional inputs, and roughly speaking, they then choose one example script from each of the clusters. And those form the 10 scripts that are submitted. If any of the 10 pass all the hidden tests, then they've succeeded in solving the coding problem. Otherwise, they fail. So that is how alpha code works at test time. There are two transformer models that need training, so I'll now move on to talk about that. AlphaCode uses the pre-training fine-tuning process that's pretty standard across deep learning today. There are two datasets. The first is a snapshot of public GitHub repositories comprised of various programming language. 
This is absolutely massive. 715 gigabytes of code is a crazy amount of code. And so this is used in a pre-training phase where it's hoped that the transformer learns some very general things like code structure and syntax. The second data set is much smaller and specific to what AlphaCode is aiming to do, and it's used for fine tuning. This data set is scraped from a few coding challenge websites, including from CodeForces, which is the platform they later test on. The dataset contains the problem descriptions, test cases, and human written solutions. Those are the datasets. Now, what do we do with them? I'll first describe the pre-training phase. Uh, so they grab some piece of GitHub code and randomly select what they call a pivot point. Everything before the pivot point will be fed into an encoder. And the objective of the decoder is going to be to reconstruct the code below that pivot. The encoder simply outputs a vector representation of the code, which is then available for the whole decoding process. The decoder operates in an autoregressive fashion. It starts by predicting the very first token of the code. Uh, the loss function is then just cross entropy between the predicted softmax output and the true token. The true first token then becomes an input to the decoder and the second token is then predicted. And this repeats until the end of the code when the decoder is asked to predict a special end of code token. Now, these losses backpropagate through both the decoder and encoder, though it turns out to be important to add a second loss just for the encoder. This is called a masked language modeling loss. Effectively, you blank out some of the tokens that are input into the encoder and as a kind of auxiliary task, the encoder tries to predict which token was masked. Once the pre-training task is done, we move to the fine-tuning task. Here we feed the problem description, metadata, and example inputs into the encoder, and we try to generate the human written code with the decoder. And at this point, you can see this fits very naturally with the structure enforced by the encoder-decoder architecture. The losses are exactly the same as for the pre-training task. There was also a second transformer that generates the test inputs. This is also initialized from the same GitHub pre-training task, but it's fine-tuned to generate test inputs rather than the code. This slide shares some facts about the transformer architectures. The team do experiment with various model sizes. As you'd expect, the bigger models tend to perform better. The encoder and decoder are themselves made up of multi-headed attention layers, which are quite standard and have been described very nicely elsewhere, so I'm not going to cover them here. That summarizes the training process and architecture of AlphaCode. There are a couple of other enhancements they borrow from other recent papers. I'm not going to talk about them all, but I did want to highlight one that I thought was pretty cool, uh, this tags and ratings enhancement. So as well as the problem description, we always include metadata as an input to the transformers. This includes the programming language, difficulty rating of the problem, some tags about the problem, and whether the solution is correct or incorrect. At training time, they obviously know what the values for these fields are, but at test time, they don't. What's pretty cool then is that they can actually input different things into these fields at test time to influence the code that is generated. So for example, you can control the programming language that the system will generate in, or even influence the style of solution it tries to generate, like whether to try a dynamic programming approach or to do exhaustive search. What they find helpful at test time is randomizing a lot of these fields when they are sampling the initial pool of 1 million solutions. The idea is that by having more diversity in this initial pool, uh, it'll be more likely that one of them might be correct. So that's my description of how AlphaCode works. I think this DeepMind team has made some really nice progress here. One thing I was pondering was why the performance level they achieve on these coding problems is quite a lot lower than the superhuman level systems we've seen on the games of Go or StarCraft. It might show that writing code from a natural language description is just inherently a much harder problem than playing games.
but it could also be because there was so much less data available. With a game, you can simulate as much data as you need, whereas there are a finite number of coding problems you can scrape from websites. Let me know in the comments why you think it's a hard problem and what you think it might take to reach superhuman level coding performance in the future. I will be making more of these types of videos explaining recent research in AI, robotics, and reinforcement learning. So if you want to be notified of these in the future, please subscribe.